Hi everybody, this is day seven of The Wizard of Oz. I hope you're enjoying the story um, and I hope you're all staying safe at home. Um, keep in mind all of the things we've been talking about while we read today, the characters, the setting, what is the problem, um, and just keep in mind every time you watch one of these videos, try to review in your head what has happened up to this point in the story. So maybe you need to go back and watch the um, video prior to this one, before this one, number six, um, to refresh your memory. Uh, that might be a good strategy to make sure that you know what's going on when we pick up. Okay, enjoy. So when we left the story the last time, the cowardly lion was asleep in the poppies and the little mouse uh, got the queen mouse got all her little mice um, to help carry the lion out of the poppies. So let's see what we have today. It was some time before the cowardly lion awakened, but when he did, he was very glad to find himself alive. Now we must journey on to the Emerald City, said Dorothy. The country was beautiful, and now green fences lined the road. Surely we are getting near the Emerald City, said Dorothy. Yes, answered the Scarecrow. Everything is green here, while in the country of the Munchkins, blue was the favorite color. They spent that night with a farm family. The next morning, they started out early and soon saw a beautiful green glow in the sky ahead. Yet it was afternoon before they came to the great green wall that surrounded the city. Before them, and at the end of the yellow brick road, was a big gate studded with emeralds that glittered so in the sun that even the painted eyes of the scarecrow were dazzled by their brilliance. There was a bell beside the gate, and Dorothy pushed the button. I wonder what will happen. The big gate swung slowly open and they found themselves in a high arched room with walls of which glistened with countless emeralds. Before them stood a little man about the same size as the munchkins. He was all in green from his head to his feet and even his skin was of a greenish tint. At his side was a large green box. When he saw Dorothy and her companions, the man asked, What do you wish in the Emerald City? We came here to see the great Oz, said Dorothy. The man was so surprised at this answer that he sat down to think it over. Then he said, I am the guardian of the gates, and since you demand to see the great Oz, I must warn you. Oz is great and terrible. If you come on an idle or foolish errand, he might be angry and destroy you instantly. Now you must put on the spectacles, because if you didn't wear them, the brightness and glory of the Emerald City would blind you. They're locked on, for Oz had so ordered it. I have the only key that will unlock them. He opened the big box, which was filled with spectacles of every size and shape. Spectacles. That's a old fashioned word for glasses. <clears throat> All of them had green glass in them. The guardian found a pair that would just fit Dorothy and put them over her eyes. Two golden bands fastened them around the back of her head where they were locked on with a little key 
that was at the end of a chain the guardian wore around his neck. Then he fitted spectacles on all the others, and even on little Toto. All were locked with the key. The guardian put on his own glasses, took a big golden key from a peg in the wall, and opened the gate to the Emerald City. Here's everybody with their spectacles on. Everything is green because emeralds are green. Have you ever seen an emerald? Dorothy and her friends were dazzled by the brilliance of the wonderful city. The houses and streets were all green marble studded with emeralds. Even the rays of the sun had a green tint. The guardian of the gates led them through the streets until they came to the Palace of Oz, the great wizard. A soldier stood at the door dressed in a green uniform and wearing a long green beard. Here are the strangers, said the guardian of the gates to the soldier. They wish to see the great Oz. The soldier bade them enter the hall and went to deliver the message to the great wizard. When the soldier returned, Dorothy asked, Have you seen Oz? Oh, no, he replied. I have never seen him, but I told him of your silver shoes and the mark upon your forehead, and he decided to grant you audience. Now I will have you shown to the rooms where you may rest in comfort after your journey. He blew upon a green whistle, and at once a young girl, dressed in green with green hair and eyes, entered the room and led them all to pretty green rooms. The next morning, the green maiden dressed Dorothy in a pretty gown made of green silk. and Dorothy added a green silk apron and tied a green ribbon around Toto's neck. Next, the green girl led them to the throne room of the Great Oz. They came to a great hall and were shown into a big round room with a high dome roof. Every surface was covered with large emeralds. What interest in what interested them most was the big throne of green marble. In the center of the seat was an enormous head. As Dorothy gazed upon this, the eyes looked at her and the mouth said, I am Oz, great and terrible. Who are you and why do you seek me? It was not such an awful voice as she had expected to come from the big head. So she took courage and answered, I am Dorothy, the small and meek. I have come to you for help. Where did you get the silver shoes and mark upon your forehead? The voice demanded. The witch of the north gave me the shoes and kissed me to protect me from harm when she sent me to you. My house fell on the wicked witch of the east and killed her and she replied, And here we are with the giant head. Yikes, look at that. That is a big head indeed. I think I would be a little bit nervous if I were in a room with a big head like that. There they are. What do you wish me to do? The voice demanded. I want to go back home to Kansas and my friends hear the... Why should I do this for you? The voice of Oz interrupted. 
You have no right to expect me to help you unless you do something for me in return. You must kill the wicked witch of the West. But I cannot, exclaimed Dorothy, greatly surprised. You killed the wicked witch of the witch of the East, and you wear the silver shoes, which bear a powerful charm. There is now but one wicked witch left in all this land, and when you can tell me that she is dead, I will grant your requests, not before. The four friends were stunned at this answer. They had no wish to kill anyone. As each stepped forward to make his plea, the scarecrow to ask for brains, the tin woodman for a heart, and the lion for courage, each got the same answer. To obtain their heart's desires, they must kill the wicked witch. Outside the fearsome throne room, they sadly resolved to begin their quest the very next morning. Got some tears in his eyes there. They all look pretty sad. I know. Well, I suppose that's what they have to do then.